Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sal, and this is another Expedition Log. Today we're traveling back up to the great state of New York, to the Syracuse area, specifically DeWitt. The mall we'll be taking a tour through was still open until the recent stay-at-home quarantine order due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite its severely low occupancy, it was open right up until that point. Today's mall began life as an open-air pavilion in the mid-20th century. It was remastered into a fantastic enclosed mall in the 70s and transformed into a beautiful space by Wilmerite in the 90s. On this expedition, I was accompanied by my very dear friend and fellow explorer, Anthony from Aces Adventures, who filmed some recent footage of this mall that you're seeing right now. Make sure to subscribe to Ace if you haven't already. Links for his channel, along with all of my social media and a link to the Dead Malls of Discord server are down below. A special shout out to all of my patrons and channel members. You guys rock. Thanks for hitting that blue button. While the coronavirus forced this mall to close, along with many others, the property was ultimately destroyed by the wholly inept management at Moonbeam Capital Investments, as if we expected anything less from them. But fortunately, Moonbeam doesn't own every mall in the world. However, lots of malls have closed across the globe. So is this the new normal? Are all of the dead malls permanently closed now? That's the question. So since we can't visit malls just yet, I'd like you to come take a walk with me and my good friend Ace through the Shopping Town Mall in DeWitt, New York. But first, a word from the only sponsor that Quite Studios could acquire for this episode. The 1994 Mexican adaptation of the Child's Play franchise, which popularized Chucky, the killer doll. This movie isn't the best, but it's incredible, and you should all watch it. For your consideration, I give you Herencia Diabolica, or The Inherited Demon Spirit. God, this movie's terrible. Following the sponsor spot is just a brief word from the Chief Liquidation Officer of Moonbeam Capital on how they handle their failing malls. Enjoy. Llego a la cocina y no la voy media de la noche. Visita, ¿qué la has hecho? Allí la está, jefe. Ya, pues apuéstate que mañana a las 8 te llamo para que vayas a recoger las pelletas. Y me acuesto el sur, para allá para abrir el restaurante que era el arroz. Y me llama el cocinero. Visita, ¿qué? Ve por la paella. Venga, que las 2 de la tarde 
ya están aquí. Mira el bañador, en la chancla. Todo peinado porque no me dio tiempo de nada ponerme la chancla y el bañador. Voy a la playa, ya subió la marea. Me cobró el tío la... Me cobró. Me cobró. Me cobró. Me On March 3rd, 1954, Egan Real Estate Incorporated opened Shopping Town. This was an open air plaza with stores like J.C. Penney, Addis Co., and Woolworth. Shopping Town served as the catalyst to bring a strong retail presence along Erie Boulevard in the city of DeWitt. In 1957, the Kellett Shopping Town Theater was added. Oklahoma was its first movie, showing on March 20th of the same year. A 98,000 square foot Day Brothers department store was constructed in 1962, and riding the success of Shopping Town through the 60s, a new three-story, 120,000-square-foot E.W. Edwards was built in 1968. This massive department store was adjoined to the original Kellett Cinema, with the movie theater entrance being enclosed and difficult to find now. So, the Shopping Town Theater was renovated, with a new entrance and twinned in 1968 to accommodate the Edwards store. In the early 70s, architectural firm Sergeant Webster Crenshaw and Foley was tasked with bringing the Egan real estate-owned Shopping Town from an open-air plaza to a massive enclosed mall. Plans were submitted, zoning was approved, and a couple years after all the permits and paperwork were signed, construction would commence. By 1974, oh. Kellett sold the cinema, and oh. the two screens were divided yet again, bringing a quadplex theater to the under-construction shopping center. It was also in 1974 that Wilmerite opened the largest shopping center in Onondaga County, the Fayetteville Mall. Egan Real Estate and Wilmerite were rivals. Then, on August 7, 1975, the fully enclosed 476,000 square foot shopping town mall was dedicated with a ribbon cutting ceremony. In the time the mall was under construction, the E.W. Edwards had vacated, and a J.C. Penney moved into the space. Serving as senior anchor alongside the Pennies was the Addis Co. department store. The shopping town mall would coast through the 1980s as most enclosed malls did at that time. Despite the growing competition coming from Wilmerite and Fayetteville up the street, Shopping Town would still garner some local attention and would show growth for the businesses in the mall in the 1980s. By 1987, things were looking so good that Egan decided to expand the mall when they added a 70,000 square foot Chapel's department store to the mix. That was the building that you saw right before we got in the mall. The store featured arched brick architecture, and you also saw it in the opening shots. Along with the chapels brought a new small concourse to the mall, with 31 new spaces for inline tenants. In 1989, the Addis Co. bought into a partnership with the Day Brothers and combined forces to launch the Addis and Day Company. Egan would work to fill the remainder of their vacant spaces into the 1990s, and as the years went on, the occupancy grew more and more healthy. By 1990, Wilmerite had acquired the three Egan real estate malls and immediately announced plans to commence a massive reimagining of their newly acquired Shopping Town Mall. It was also in 1990, April 28th to be exact, that the Carousel Center would open less than 15 minutes away from Shopping Town. Carousel Center and its 1 million square feet of shopping spanning six floors of retail would ultimately take away for most of the retail revenue earned in the entire city of Syracuse. And Shopping Town stood no chance against this behemoth. One year later, in 1991, as a show of force, Wilmerite announced a $53 million remodeling of their modest Shopping Town Mall, which would add a 10-stall food court, 
with a two-story merry-go-round, a brand new parking garage to connect the three anchor concourses, adding a shiny new 120,400 square foot Addis and Days department store, finally allowing the Addis and Days to move out of their smaller footprints into the gorgeous new store that Wilmerite built for them. Wilmerite were going absolute full send and trying like a son of a bitch to bring their simple mall up to the standard that people were holding them against, faced with the stiff and absurd competition of the Carousel Center. The grand rededication and ribbon cutting for the now 883,000 square foot shopping town mall was celebrated on August 22nd, 1991. 13,000 glitter lights adorning the new atrium style skylight ceiling, replacing the outdated clarisori windows with enough marbled porcelain tile to cover two entire football fields. With some minor changes, this is exactly how the mall looked in 1991, after Wilmerite bought the mall from Egan Real Estate. So the changes you're seeing are what Wilmerite did to an existing mall built by Egan Real Estate. Now, it's worth taking a look at what the mall used to look like before Wilmerite got a hold of it. So many people out there call Shopping Town a Wilmerite mall without having done the research. And it's true that this mall has tons of Wilmerite DNA in it, but I do the research and you can trust my facts because I have the receipts. I'd also like to make a really quick plug for Xlog 57, which premiered last week and featured the North Shore Square Mall down in Slidell, Louisiana. That mall is now closed, but it's a gorgeous mall inside and it's a fantastic expedition log. But it sort of bombed last week, and I'm not sure why. So maybe you guys can just do me a favor after you watch this video. Go check out Xlog57, and I'll put a link to it right here. I found a website during my research phase for this episode that has a bunch of pictures of what the mall looked like when it was developed by Egan Real Estate back in 1975. The website is SyracuseNostalgia.com. And I'd like to show you these photos, if you don't mind, then bring you back to reality with a quick ad from the grand rededication in 1991 when Wilmerite went and Wilmerited the shopping town mall. These first few photos show the section of the mall where the chapels used to be and where the movie theater now resides. And these next few photos show the old Addis Co. wing that turned Sears later in life. Just look at this amazing vintage aesthetic. Yeah, I think the mall looks great now, but I really miss when malls used to have old school aesthetics like this. Man, that's so cool. Shopping Town has remodeled and expanded just for you with new enclosed free parking, a full cuisine food court, and a two level merry go round. And while you visit Shopping Town, register to win the ultimate children's fantasy dream house, now being built in the mall by Dallas Homes and your Shopping Town mall merchants, who can also help make dreams come true for the Ronald McDonald House Share a Night program. For shopping excitement and fun, it's Shopping Town in the ultimate children's fantasy dream house. Shopping Town, always a pleasant surprise. Route 481, exit 3 to work. He just hurt his knee on the branch. <laughs> Walk it off. Walk it off. <laughs> I'll take a dozen snickerdoodles. <laughs> the original Addis Co. anchor space was just sitting abandoned and lifeless. However, it was filled in March of 1992 when TJ Maxx opened in the lower level, and just a bit later, Steinbach's department store opened in the upper level. Only two years after opening the brand new flagship store, the 120,000 square foot Addison Day location across the mall from the Steinbachs and TJ Maxx would shutter in 1993. A Kaufman's would open up in the newly built Addison Day space just months later in 1993 on May 26th. I'm guessing that Kaufman's had their eyes set on a northern expansion and felt that Addison Day were a sizable competition, so they were able to acquire this space. 
The Steinbacks would shutter their location in the upper level of the first gen Addis Co location on June 18, 1994, followed by the lower level of the original 50s location being vacated by TJ Maxx, which had moved to Wilmerite's more profitable property, the Fayetteville Mall, on August 8, 1994. Then in January of 1995, the abandoned 1954 Addis Co space would finally be filled by Sears, who came in as the Shopping Town Mall's third senior anchor, accompanied by J.C. Penney in the middle of the mall and Kaufman's at the other end juxtaposing Sears. Right now we're in the Sears wing, and you can see the shuttered storefront that Sears used to occupy. And you'll also see my favorite feature that I've ever seen in a mall, the miniature escalator. If anything, leave a like for this miniature escalator. It's the most adorable thing I've ever seen in a mall. How awesome is that escalator? I would ride that thing all day. Go up, come down the stairs. Go up, come down the stairs. At the beginning of 1995, right after the Sears came in, the dark brick-faced chapels was long vacant and it was now occupied by a Bonton department store, which was among the senior anchor lineup at Shopping Town, so I guess you could say they had four senior anchors at this point. That gnarly, gross carpet stain really reminds me of Century 3. Ah, what I wouldn't give just to spend a few more minutes inside Century 3. In 1997, the original twinned Shopping Town theater was completely demolished and subsequently reopened as the Hoyts Shopping Town Mall 10 Cinema on October 3, 1997. As we crossed Y2K and ventured into the 21st century, the Shopping Town Mall still faced extraordinary degrees of competition from the Carousel Mall. By October of 2000, the Dick's Sporting Goods had relocated from a smaller space inside the mall to a brand new 50,000 square foot expansion, bringing the total gross leasable area to an impressive 1,002,100 square feet. By September 24, 2001, the Fayetteville Mall was being demolished, despite over $20 million in renovations across the 1990s. Wilmerite may have planned this, seeing that Shopping Town had much more potential to capitalize on the local economy and populace than Fayetteville. However, in the same year, Carousel Mall was renamed Destiny USA, and by 2002, they announced that the mall would include the world's largest water park, therefore introducing dire levels of cahoots between the two malls, of which the Shopping Town Mall wouldn't be able to survive. This whole thing seems absurd for an enclosed shopping mall, but remember the Mills Corp was working on introducing their American Dream Mall since 1994, known as Xanadu, until 2011. But the idea of a massive multi-experiential shopping, eating, and entertainment mega mall was the big thing for developers in the early aughts. I may plan a trip out to the American Dream Mall once it finally opens in full, but as it stands, it's not fully open yet. Ace and I decided to take the long way back into the mall, so we went outside, and we found this quirky little entrance that used to be for the Sears. It's always an adventure getting lost in mall guts, but this time, it worked in our favor, and lucky for us, we get to see the mini escalator one more time. What we're looking at right now is the fully grown adult version of the baby escalator in the Sears wing. Thankfully, we'll see the baby escalator one more time just to have a good comparison between the two. Adult versus baby. Nature's fascinating inside dead walls.
In April of 2005, the Macerich Company, based out of Santa Monica, California, purchased the entire catalog of malls from Wilmerite. This was a massive deal coming in at over $2.3 billion, and it gave Macerich an incredible footprint in the landscape of American shopping malls. Needless to say, Macerich became the new owners of the Shopping Town Mall in 2005, with the individual selling price for the mall at a whopping $87.7 million. Shortly after the mall changed hands, the former chapel space turned Bonton closed. January 28, 2006, leaving the Shopping Town Mall with only three senior anchors. It was also in 2006 when the May Company bought out the Pittsburgh-based Kaufman's chain for $11 billion. The Shopping Town Mall, Kaufman's nameplate, and store were rebranded to a Macy's on September 9, 2006, making the senior lineup a JCPenney, Sears, and Macy's. It's a pretty typical anchor lineup if you ask me, but it worked back then, I guess. It was in 2007 that Destiny USA doubled in size and added a $200 million renovation and hotel to its directory and basically destroyed all of its local competition. Back here at the Shopping Town Mall, all they could muster was a simple movie theater expansion. The bottom floor of the two-year vacant Chappelle's turned Bonton was redeveloped to accommodate a much-needed expansion and redevelopment at the movie theater when a brand new Regal Shopping Town Mall Stadium 14 was opened on July 11, 2008 to crazy amounts of fanfare. Surely, the owners thought that a few extra seats in the movie theater could adequately compete against the nearly 2.5 million square foot mega mall down the road. The movie theater expansion is all they came in swinging with, and it would not be enough to save the shopping town mall. This skate park looks to be some old department store, and I don't know what it was. So if any of you that were at this mall, local to this mall, or know about what this store used to be, please let me know down in the comments. But the people that ran this place were super cool, and they let me down here to film. And this is the first time that I've ever seen a skate park to this extent inside of a mall. There's also the fabled skate park that was built at the Century 3 Mall. I think about Century 3 Mall at least once a day. And when I see this, of course I'm going to think about the Century 3 Mall. But that's the only other reference that I have where I know of a skate park inside of a mall. So if you know what this used to be, let me know down in the comments. Hey, what's your name? Kim. Kim, you rock. Thanks. Have a good day, Kim. Hi, Kim. Just a few years later, in 2011, Macerich decided to just walk away from the mall when their balloon payment of $39 million came due. They just gave the mall back to the bank and had the property go up on auction a few years later. The mall was sold for an undisclosed amount to Florida-based LNR Properties in January of 2012 and would be managed by Jones Lang LaSalle who typically just act as caretakers to the sinking ships that are dead malls. By late 2012, the mall was placed back on the auction block only to be sold to Moonbeam Capital Investments in August of 2013 for a bargain basement sale price of $13.65 million. Immediately after acquiring the property and surely just to appease their bondholders, they announced an ambitious plan to redevelop the property into an open air shopping center to better serve the community. Yeah, right. Obviously, nothing came of this, and due to the community upheaval and lack of cash for Moonbeam, it never came to pass. I'm pretty sure they knew that this redevelopment wouldn't happen, and they just bought the property for tax breaks and an inevitable write-off. In my tenure curating the Expedition Log series, and in the multitude of research I've done on these malls, Moonbeam has the absolute worst track record when it comes to mall ownership. Virtually every mall they take control of is on a downward spiral and probably bought for cheap at an auction. Their vampiric acquisition of these malls is a testament to their management style. They take control of a mall for well under the assessment price, make some less than genuine announcement for a far-fetched and over-the-top redevelopment that will never come to pass, gain some tenancy and investors from said announcement, and ultimately fail to deliver on every front. Within three years of Moonbeam owning the Shopping Town Mall, it had lost most of its tenants. Macy's would be the first to go, shuttering in May of 2015. Dick's Sporting Goods followed suit, moving away from the Shopping Town Mall about six months later in October. Again, to appease their investors, Moonbeam announced plans to demolish the Sears wing of the mall, which was an idea thrown around back in 2007. So they just pulled it out of their hat again. JCPenney would close their doors on April 8, 2016, followed by a mass exodus of inline tenants over the next year and a half. 
The last holdout was Sears, who finally closed on September 2nd, 2018. Two months after this, I showed up with Ace to film them all in November of 2018. Here's where things get sketchy for Moonbeam, and this is why I've got them under the microscope. In December of 2018, the Burlington Center Mall in New Jersey had its second water main break, which was owned by Moonbeam. It closed. You saw that water main break on film on the Expedition Lock series. Then in May 2019, there was a water main break right here at Shopping Town, which was owned by Moonbeam. It's now closed. Then in August of 2019, there was a water main break at Century 3 Mall in Pittsburgh, which was owned by Moonbeam. It too closed. On August 13th, 2019, the CEO of Shopping Town Mall, New York, LLC, Edward Sklyroff, on behalf of Moonbeam, who owned the mall, announced that they would be heading to bankruptcy court to fight off the city from closing the mall, as they owed over $9.7 million in unpaid property taxes dating back to 2015. They were also petitioning to get the mall's tax assessment lowered from its $36.7 million valuation down to what they thought was a more reasonable and fair $3.7 million. The county wanted to get the mall turned over to the Onondaga County Industrial Development Agency for redevelopment. This never happened. Then in April of 2019, a heated lawsuit between the former owner of the Macy's building at Shopping Town and Moonbeam made its crescendo in court, as the Macy's owner argued that because of Moonbeam's inability to pay the nearly $10 million in back taxes, this caused irreparable harm to the businesses at the mall and ultimately drove away traffic. The next month, in May 2019, the building of the former Addis Co turned Sears was sold for $3.9 million to Transform Sale Co LLC. Are you surprised that one anchor sold for the price Moonbeam was trying to fetch for the entire mall property? Moonbeam were trying to scam the government out of tax money by deflating the price of their mall like total scumbags, and it came back to bite them right in the ass. By July of 2019, Moonbeam CEO Steve Maxit was being held in contempt for not paying the back taxes that he owed and he was being faced with jail time. Ultimately, the judge decided against this and let him and his greasy minions slide. But in early 2020, at the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and due to the stay-at-home orders set by Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York State, the shopping town mall was shuttered. It had barely any stores inside, and if you were able to visit just before its closure, you always asked yourself, how the hell is this place still open? There must be an incredible amount of dead malls, small malls, small hallways, smalls if you want to call them that, and quaint little retail nooks that were forced to be closed due to the pandemic. Yeah, it's true, the curve seems to be flattening and coming down, which is fantastic news. But what about the local businesses inside already failing malls and small retail establishments? These mall owners haven't been paying their property taxes, and many of them ignore their bills altogether, getting by on just paying the interest payments. Their malls are so vacant that they don't want to risk kicking out their sole arcade or bouncy castle tenant, even if they don't pay for months on end. How can these malls reopen after this and justify the losses of operation contrasted with the stark poverty the mall owners find themselves in when it comes to finally paying their state taxes, let alone the rent they owe the entity that controls the mall? As of the publishing of this video on May 3rd, 2020, Robert Finkel, who was the manager of the original 1975 Henry Wilson and Sons Jewelers at the Shopping Town Mall, passed away from complications due to COVID-19. My thoughts go out to his family and anyone else out there who's affected by this disease. And while we're seeing a decline in the number of cases with a flattening curve, this isn't the time to drop our guard. So please continue to help those on the front lines battling this by staying home if you can. And I will keep doing the same and producing weekly content for all of you out there. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video with a special shout out to my patrons and all of those who've become members of my channel as Elite Explorers. Your support means the world to me. Also thanks to the Dead Malls of Discord family and all of the members on the Demod Seal. Go follow all of them, especially Anthony at Ace's Adventures, who made this episode possible. Right before he arrived to meet me here, I was being followed heavily by mall security and a couple of janitors flanking me in the back corridors. The minute Ace got there, it's like the security vanished and we had the run of the place. He's got some sort of dead mall witchcraft or something. I don't know. Thanks again, Ace. Looking forward to our next expedition. So please be sure to follow me on my social media and join the Dead Malls of Discord server. And if you would, consider becoming a channel member or patron. Because once this quarantine's lifted, I'm headed out on expedition and I'm not coming back. We're going big in 
2020 and onward on the Expedition Log series. Links to everything are down below. I'm hoping that all the dead malls around the country decide to reopen with a renewed sense of purpose and that they find tenants to keep the doors open. There's a ton out there for me to film, and soon enough, I'll be out there on Expedition. But until then, stay tuned for Xlog 59 next week. So please stay home if you can, stay safe, take care, and have a fantastic day. <laughs>